So, in a lethal force confrontation, would I feel comfortable defending my life with a Bursa Thunder 380? Hmm. That is an interesting question. By the end of this video, I will have answered it. Bursa Trust Thunder me. And along the way, we're going to cover all the aspects project. of this pistol. In the trench. Long time subs know how it runs here on Tabletop. We'll talk about durability, reliability, value, field strip, firepower, sides, width, weight, accuracy, all that stuff. If you're in a hurry, I'm not so sure this is a best format for you. Any video, for that matter. Just click around on the internet. Go to Wikipedia. Go to Bursa's website. They have all the specifications there. A summary of the features of the Bursa Thunder pistols. Swinger. But, as my subs know... If you're in the market for quality information, no BS data, some entertainment, some stupid humor at times, you have found your home with the Nut and Fancy Project. As always, delivered to you free of charge. Thanks for joining me, by the way. You guys rock. Long time subs and new oh, subs. We get new people all the time. And I guess for those new people, maybe I should give the following intro. There's a lot going on in the Nut and Fancy project. Click around in the playlists, watch those videos, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Let's see, we have political videos, defending the cause of freedom, your firearms rights, for instance, life philosophy videos, multi-tool reviews, occasionally flashlight reviews, tactical gear reviews, survival skills videos once in a while, yeah, backpacking videos, car racing videos, motorcycle videos, knife reviews, and of course, the gun show. And I probably forgot 20 other things that we yeah. cover here in TMP, me and the crew. It's a diverse field of subjects. And the reason why I say this, there is a point, is I don't waste time on crap in the Nut and Fancy Project anymore. In other words, I'm not going to acquire stuff that I know is not going to perform well. There's so many other great yeah, things to bring to the table. Doubt it, but You're looking at one of them. You are perfect on all the Likeability lights. scale on the Bursa Thunder 380. Here it comes. 10 out of 10. What? Nothing fancy. You hate 380s. Well, that's a little harsh. Uh, there is some truth to that, though. In fact, I will refer you to another video posted several years ago called Why the 380 Sucks. And it is a philosophy video on the 380 cartridge. Not really a gun, but the cartridge. And yes, there are distinct downsides to it. I'm not going to go over them here. In this video, as we talk about the various aspects of the Bursa Thunder, we're going to compare and contrast against, you guessed it, 9 and 40 semi-automatic pistols. We have to. It's no longer, I don't know, 1994. It's, you know, modern day. Things have changed in SAWC. By the way, noobs, that stands for size and weight constraints. Long time subs. They're all over it. How about philosophy of use? With this particular gun, not the cartridge. And I will stand by that video, by the way, 110%. I am still not a fan of the 380. The cartridge. It's expensive. Oh, here I go. Recap and everything I said in that video. I can't do that. Just go watch the video. It's expensive. Ugh, all that stuff. I want to say it, but for time constraints. Forget about it. The Bursa 380 is outstanding for a 380. Now, if it goes up against other centerfire competition, and just because I have it here, for instance, the outstanding Springfield XDS-9. In my carry system, it will lose. It will. This is a more powerful gun. It's not that much heavier. This is 20 ounces. The XDS is 23 ounces. For me, and what I like about the 9, very size efficient and for what it is, powerful cartridge, this wins. For me. I just did a brace, nice word, of pistol reviews. Subcompact, truly subcompact, 9mm and 40 for that matter, pistol reviews. Go look, up, look them up in the best, oh, I forget what I labeled it, pocket pistol videos. 
I got a playlist on that, kind of like this one. And this one's hot, i.e. loaded, and I'm not unloading it right now because it's in service with the TNP clan. Smith & Wesson Shield. Weight empty, of course, 21 ounces. It's only one ounce more than the 380 chambered Burst of Thunder. Obviously, you see where I'm going with this. I know there are upsides, and we're going to cover them right now in PLU of the Bursa 380. For instance, maybe, just maybe, the shooter who is adopting this carry pistol, that and that's what we're talking about, really, isn't it? A concealed carry pistol that you'll defend your life with. I hope you never have to do that. What's the best option? The answer is it just depends who's doing the carrying, who's going to be shooting this pistol. It's If it's your wife, and she's just coming into the realm of concealed carry, maybe, and this is hard for some people to grasp, the shield is too much that she won't like shooting it. I know there are some folks that are just very recoil shy. This is very soft shooting. Fire quick. Very ergonomic, very easy to hit with. If you can't hit with the pistol you're carrying, whoever you are, what's the purpose of carrying it? Me, I hit good with that gun, I hit good with that gun, that gun, but I'm an experienced shooter. For a newbie, maybe not. And in that realm, in that philosophy of use, an unintimidating concealed carry pistol option, the Thunder rocks. Now, if we're talking about size of this gun, it's not all that. I mean, it's not a tiny gun, the, bu the Burst of Thunder. Let's bring on the PPK Hall of Famer here in TMP. It's been that way for eons. Dripping with all types of second kind of cool. I said that in the review, yeah, right? You're loaded. It's right. a James Bond gun, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. It's cool. And it shoots well. It performs. You can do a headshot with a PPK at 25 yards. Go check out that GRV in TMP. How's that for acronym? Main body. You'll see all the data there. But let's, we're talking about just size. So let's take, and this isn't the first time anyone's done this. I'm sure everyone's done it. PPK versus the Bursa Thunder. So it's a little bit longer, about the same width if you don't count for the grips. The grips on the Bursa are wider. They're definitely longer, like so. It's a bigger pistol, same chambering. I'll tell you what though, there's people who you, you will give a PPK to and they can't hit crap with it. They shoot it very poorly. In fact, in some circles it's considered an expert's pistol. Because it's very small, it's diminutive, hard to shoot well. You can get outside. slide bite with the original PPK. Inter -arms. Arms PPKs are an original PPK. You see that beaver tail is very abbreviated. On the Bursa, not so much. This might be a good place, by the way, to interject as we talk about the comparison between the PPK and the Bursa. Well, the different models currently from Bursa. And all this is subject to change. This is the Duotone one. Standard Bursa 380, which, by the way, I think was first marketed around mid-90s, somewhere around there. It's taken off ever since. Very successful for Bursa, Nuts. as it should be, by the way. Remember, likability, at least for me, 10 out of 10. They also have the matte finished one. It's black. That looks very cool. They have a Crimson Trace equipped Bursa Thunder. And then they have the Bursa Combat, which is very interesting. That particular version has OD rubber grips, low snag sights apparently, different sl slide milling, smaller beaver tail, kind of like the PPK. Not sure if it'll slide by you. I didn't shoot that version. Low profile slide release, and I think that's it. That's the combat model of the Bursa Thunder 380. I'd probably go with that one if I'm going to conceal carry it because it's the same freaking weight. 20.5 ounces for the combat. This Thunder one's 20 ounces, so same weight. It's freezing 3. out 5 here. 3.5 inch barrel. Versus accurate. the PPK, it's a bigger gun. Back Probably to philosophy of use. Some other guns we've tested here today. You can't shoot your PPK well. Mm. And we're assuming that the, the contact distance is going to be, on, be beyond the standard engagement distance of inside five yards. Worst case, then what's it matter? I bet you if you gave that person who was having a hard time shooting the PPK a Bursa, 
they would start connecting with it. And this is where we have to cover ergonomics. I want to kind of go out of order. We talked about the grips, how longer this way, obviously, also fatter. But I'll tell you what, it gives a great purchase for you to shoot the Bursa. It's comfortable, more hand filling. See groove front strap, back strap. We have enclosed grips with a PPK, not so much on the Bursa. They're kind of like slabs. It's a very comfortable gun to shoot ergonomically. Really is. The trigger, for instance, is better than the PPK. That's right. I said it. It's truth, man. We're all about truth here in TMP. And remember, this one right here has a trigger job. Okay, this PPK, I talked about that in a review, but let's just pull on it. This is post trigger job PPK, which I absolutely love. The gun rocks. And we'll just do single action first. Told you we're going to cover it all. Whoa, reset, reset. Atta boy. Five, six. It should pull around five. Around five, I think. Let's see. There you go. So around five pounds on that. That's post trigger job, single action. Let's try du double action. Get ready to laugh. This is just hilarious. Because the geometry, the spring geometry in a PPK is such that it's very difficult to get positive ignition and double action and get a, hard, or a nice, decent double action trigger pull. You just can't. Watch. Freaking 12 pounds. What? The other last time I did it, it said, I don't know, exceeded the the immeasurable amount on that scale. Okay, so here comes the Bursa. First single action. What would you think? What would you think? You guys who have the Thunder already know, right? 5.5. Five. It should also pull pre-trigger job, by the way, 5 pounds. Clear that out all the way. There you go. So about the same, and that's without any trigger job at all. Let's try double action. Is it going to be 12 pounds? Nope. I don't think so. Should pull around 10-ish. There you go. Trigger's better. We're talking about philosophy of use and how it's ergonomically superior to the PPK. This gun actually reminds me of the, uh, what is it, the Beretta Cheetah? More than the PPK, this gun. Just more hand filling, better trigger out of box, and if you gunsmith this trigger on the Thunder, man, I imagine it's going to be stellar. The magazine release between the two guns, very similar. It's excellent on the PPK. I don't mind it. It is flush with that grip panel right there. Here it protrudes a little bit, and I actually like this one a little bit better. It's easier to access. I'm not so sure, lefties, you will like this gun. It's set up for a right-handed shooter. Sorry, right-handed world, uh, unless I'm missing something with it. Notice this, you have an undercut portion right here of the frame, and you have a hooked trigger guard. What? Who needs a hooked trigger guard on any pistol, nothing? Well, I do, because I shoot that way. I always have, and I shoot well that way. Fast and accurate. I love this feature. I hate that the PPK doesn't have it. Granted, the PPK is smaller. 15 degrees in the I love this. The hook trigger guard on that, yeah, again, very Beretta, Beretta-ish, I'll say. Awesome. On steel. Standard slide serrations right here, and it has the hammer drop safety, just like the PPK does. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, test for the you gun. just finish firing, you engage the safety, it will drop the hammer. Slide release, outstanding on this gun. And the slide release on the PPK, there isn't one. Chalk up another one for the Thunder. Just keeping it real. It's nice having a slide release on any gun. I don't care what it is, man. It's just handy. I'll tell you what isn't handy is this, though. Magazine safety. Magazine's out of the gun. You cannot fire it. Is there a way to defeat it? I don't know. Didn't look it up. Probably. No magazine well funneling there, as you can see. Got magazine safety on the PPK? Uh, I don't think so, if memory serves. Not at all. Advantage PPK. Not that I'm really comparing these two guns together, but the you know it's kind of obvious. Well, don't worry, we'll get to value. I know what you guys are thinking, but that's a more expensive gun, doesn't? I know it is. 
Trust me, we cover all the bases here in tabletop. Ergonomics. I, and again, I'm going out of order here, but it's interesting for POU. The sights on the PPK are, an ext are extremely low profile. I can hit good with them. However, as I get older, my eyes get worse. Uh, maybe not so much. Sights on the Bursa are better. Three dot variety and they're windage adjustable. And if you don't like them, you can throw some, uh, not tridges, but meprolites. Some tritium sights on it. Cool. I don't know of that option for the PPK at all. Advantage Bursa again. The top of the slide is about the same. You can see the milling to reduce glare. Their profiles of the slides are very similar. No surprise there. Really, the layout is almost identical as far as the controls go, albeit we have a slide release here. How about a, we talked about, I don't know, concealed carry option for those who are recoil shy. Maybe it's your wife, your girlfriend, whoever. How about for a kid? Never shot a pistol before. Would I turn them on to a PPK? And I'm talking this generation, not the Smith & Wesson PPK. Or a Bursa. You are correct, sir. I would turn them on to the Bursa a lot sooner than that. Remember, when you take a new shooter out, and I've alluded to this already. Awesome Don't you know overwhelm them with something that's snappy that's going to cut their hand with slide bite. They want they won't want to go shooting again. That seems obvious, right? But there's a lot of people that don't adhere to that. And lo and behold, they don't make allies to the shooting sport. They make enemies to the shooting sport. They're like, I'm never going to shooting again. Great carry pistol in terms of ergonomics, in terms of absolute carryability. I would say advantage PPK still. We already talked about the dimensions, and in some respects, advantage some compact 9 millimeters. Let's take it up against the shield here, just real quick so you can see. Shield's a little bit thicker, it looks like. But remember, we're not taking into account the grip panels, and no, I didn't measure them. 9mm, 9 mm though, so I'm a little bit more forgiving in both SAWC for the, the harder-hitting cartridge. XDS. About the same overall size. And that's why I was saying what I said in 380 sucks. Sticking with it. How about car gun? And I got to jump to value for this. Because this sucker is very expensive. Walther PPK. No matter what version you get. This one's half the price. About $240. And that brings us back to car gun POU. Because I think you should, wherever it's legal, have a gun in your car. You know, your license to carry. Just because options are good. Your number one option should be to extricate yourself from the situation. Whatever it is. Interesting. That's not very what if awesome. you can't? What if you're in this situation, that situation? Yeah, I like it. But if it gets stolen, am I going to, you know, have my life ruined because I lost my $240 gun? No. No. I mean, it's not free, but it's pretty darn affordable. And I think it's also a pretty good Here, go motorcycle gun. Kind of an oblique angle. Which actually, this is why this one's loaded, the shield. I've been running around on the motos with it in this case. Taped in yellow so I can find it easier in my tank bag. That's POU. Hope you liked it. Along the way, we covered a lot of things. Talking about size, width, weight, balance, and feel. The balance is excellent. It feels... I don't know why I'm still showing you this PPK. See ya. I still love that gun. Don't get me wrong. It feels great. It's, kill me. And my, it's amazing in terms of uh, its confidence that it gives you. This gun. Come on. Right, there we go. You feel like you can hit with it. And lo and behold, you can. Which will lead us to accuracy, I guess. And there's probably some other POUs we didn't discuss, like recreational. But, dude, if you're shooting 380 recreationally, uh, you have more money than I do. And you're lucky enough to find 380 ammo, which is still hard to come by. A reference to video I mentioned earlier. Talked all about it there. Almost. Accuracy of this thing is, how should we say, superb. I mean, absolutely superb. One of the best 380s I've shot. And I've shot some good 380s. Brought them to the tabletop here. The Diamondback DB 380 was one of them. Albeit highly unreliable, but a very accurate one. Probably the overall most accurate 380 I've shot, but this is uh, coming in with it, depending on the load. Here's MagTech. 
That's the one I just showed you, by the way. This one right here. It's an 85 grain, supposedly plus P cartridge. And this is in 2011. Yeah, we've had this guy in a while. And by the way, this is a by request video, if you don't know. Tim Pierce requested this video like, I don't know, 09? Yeah, we've had it a while. We'll get around to it. You guys are the ones turn me on to this thing. You TMPers, my subs, are like, dude, you got to check out Bursa. We need a review. And I'm like, oh, there's tons of reviews on that gun. Do you really need one? Like, yeah. Yeah. Non-relenting. So there it is. We got around to it. This group wasn't so awesome. PMC went wide. PMC went right, wide there. That's not too bad. By the way, this is at 17 yards. So uh, I'm, I'm going to check that. I'm going to say those groups are actually pretty amazing. For a pocket pistol. 12 yards, MagTech, 85 grain, plus P hollow points, 100% reliable. I made a note to myself, and that says something, because this hot cartridge generates some slide velocity that a lot of 380s will have trouble with. A Walther PP I shot this stuff out of, although I shouldn't have because it's not rated for it. Was not reliable with it. I think I talked about that in that review. Oh, damn. Look at that. Jeez, 12 yards? That represents the gun. That's exactly what I'm talking about. All those ergonomic, cool things this gun possesses, if you have good marksmanship fundamentals, results in that. Let me keep it real. I, I can't do that with a shield. There's no way. I tried. I cannot do a group that time. I can get them all in the yellow easy. Same with this gun. A little bit tighter with this gun, if I remember right. First, I beat him in that. Nice group. Nice group. Yeah, that one's okay. Last target. Oh, no, I got two more. Nice. 12 yards. This is FMJ, PMC. I was aiming here. That's what the mark is for. Good group, actually. That's three shots. Very, very accurate. Accurate guns excite me. They make me smile. Anybody's that way, by the way. If you can hit good with a gun, you're going to like the gun. I don't care what it is. Someone picks up a gun, they start hitting good with it, they're going, I love this thing. It's just human nature, man. This is Independence uh, FMJ. It's kind of a reload, I think. 2011. Seven yards. Shredded that guy in the head. There's your accuracy. Uh, I'll rate it as outstanding. That takes us to firepower. Uh, how about one more round than a PPK in this standard form? And I know what you're thinking. Hey, nothing. There is a uh, Thunder 380 Plus that has 15 rounds. It's the same weight. And you are correct. So it's exactly the same weight as this one. And it has 15 plus one. The Bursa Thunder 380 Plus. Awesome. It's going to be fatter in the grip, I bet you. In fact, I've handled one. I think it was. This one is sub plus one in 380, and that is going to be, again, one more than the PPK with the flush mount magazine. If you have a finger rest magazine, you can go, and I'm talking standard PPK, then uh, it'll be equal. If you go with a PPK S, it'll be equal. Firepower's on par for a 380, nothing special. On to field strip. This is where it also dominates the PPK. Uh, at least to me it does. I mean, the PBK, we're going to swing this, you know, I'm not going to do it here, but we're going to swing this trigger guard down, lock it on, and then we can pull our slide back, pop it off, right? Seen it, done it. It's not hard. I'm not saying it is hard, but I sure like a dedicated takedown lever of this gun. Very cool. I don't even think you have to take the magazine out. By habit and by consistency, I always do. I recommend you do as well. This is the takedown lever. You just push and hold it. It has kind of a spring tension on it. Pull the slide back. Pop off the slide. And then you see the internal of the Bursa 3, uh, Thunder 380. I don't think I've cleaned this one for a while. And uh, we'll talk about reliability here in a sec. If you do take this recoil spring off and you want to clean it. By the way, you don't have to take, that, take off that takedown lever. You can just leave it. But notice this is a snug portion. We're talking about field strip. Don't put it on like this where it's loose. That's not how it goes. Almost always a 
blowback operated gun will have that snug on the barrel and this is obviously blow blowback not a locked breech or anything like that to put it back together just reverse and by the way look at the quality solid steel milled slide of the Bursa Thunder 380 made in Argentina by the way imported currently by these dudes I guess that will probably change and has changed over the years I don't know has a firing pin safety in it too so if I were to carry the Bursa 380 I would just carry it you know cocked unlocked safety off it's just me though do what you want then we put it together we're gonna push that take down lever forward and you can see how easy it was just kind of went on by itself do a function check to do that we need to put the magazine back in safe direction done Cake. You saw this. I don't know if you did or not. This is an aluminum frame, but they're solid metal slide rails, which will contribute to that accuracy that we saw. Field strip, very, very easy. Love it. Maintenance is going to be easy, and that will lead us to durability and reliability. I think we had a total of two jams and about 400 rounds shot through the Thunder. If I find the video, I'll show you. If I don't, you'll just have to take my word for it. I forget which type of loads they were. It happened though. It happens with all 380s that I've shot here in the Nut and Fancy project. It just has. I would say overall though, amazing. Amazing reliability, especially considering the price. $240 for this thing, and it's almost completely reliable. I think one thing that helps is a larger, somewhat larger form factor that we're talking about. It just, I don't know, makes a gun run a little bit better. A little bit better. Uh, I don't. I think I have heard on some complaints about reliability on the Bursa. I just didn't see them, and that's all I bring to the table. I don't need anybody else's data. I generate my own, and it was right phenomenal. Neck. When I say ten out of ten, we're talking a, a lot goes into that rating, and it's rare I put it into video form. I'm going to first start off with value. Again, two hundred forty dollars. It's half price, at less than half of a PPK. Accuracy, we showed you that. Reliability, it's there. Ergonomics, it's there. The only really downside to me is that it is a 380. This particular chamber. I know. But in terms of a 380, I'm not going to penalize the pistol just because it's chambered in a cartridge that I personally would not opt as my first choice. Does that make sense? I think that's a very consistent and fair approach. Hey, I'm going to give that a 6 out of 10 because it's a 380. That's stupid. Great, great gun. I don't do that. I, I evaluate it as is. We want to talk about the cartridge and all, all about. Right, give me you know, give me a night. I'll criticize the cartridge all day long. I know it's better. It's much better with loads like this. Thunder. Hydro shock. Where did I? There's a hydro shock right here. 90 grain hydro shock. I've been carrying that forever in the PPK. One cool thing about the Thunder is that, dude. I mean, if it hits the way I showed you, like this right here. Shot placement is critical with any underpowered pistol. Let's try any pistol because all pistols are underpowered, right? Oh, Absolutely. Stop. Accessories, versatility. What do you need to make this gun better? Uh, nothing. Hmm. Well, okay, something. You need extra magazines. I don't. I think they're pretty affordable. Pro Mag makes one that is reliable. This is a burst of factory one. You should probably carry at least another magazine that's still not a ton of firepower you know 15 rounds I'm talking 7 plus 7 plus 1 if you're running the plus model then of course you're gonna have a lot more get the Pro Max they're cheap how about holsters I don't really know I didn't go around shopping for holsters I usually shoot from our universal holsters in testing and review here in the project but I'm sure you can find something like ish right here this is DeSantis for the PPK, you know, inside the pant. I don't think you're going to have any problems doing that. And I also would not recommend for the Thunder a trigger job. You might be surprised to hear that because I'm a trigger snob once again. But I think as it pulls, dude, I am happy with that gun. Obviously, it shoots well. Value is pretty outstanding, actually, considering that it's $240. I keep saying that because it's amazing and it's a lifetime warranty on this thing you have any problems send it back to Bursa and they'll fix it I know there's a lot of gun companies like that but from what I hear this one takes a back seat to no one 
in terms of customer service. I like those grips, by the way. I don't really talk about those. Kind of sharp checkering, kind of a thumb ramp. I wouldn't replace the grips, though. I don't think they need it. Just enjoy the gun as it comes. I mean, it's really that squared away. Track record-wise, at Nuts. least with us, top-notch, baby. Top-notch. Only if you can answer, would you carry a Bursa versus a Hall of Fame 9mm or 40 subcompact? I don't know. Me? I choose this. Keeping it real. I like a harder-hitting cartridge. Handguns are already underpowered. Stuff I've already said. But if I'm going to go with a 380 and one I know I can hit very well with and price is a consideration. Second kind of cool. Does this gun have it? Not really. But maybe you don't care. You just care about functionality, capability. Go with the Bursa. Hall of Famer here in TNP. See ya.